Hi everyone and welcome to yesterday, November 28th, Dermal Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps and also be a beauty and hit that bell down below so you get updated every time we upload a new recap. So I've been talking to you about net neutrality for the past few days and I wanted to share a little story with you. First off, I just want to say that the direct links through the FCC to contact the FCC commissioners to let them know that you support net neutrality is in the description as well as a sample letter that you can take and change to to your liking and also there's a link to find your representative so you can contact your representative in Congress and also your senators so really fast I want to share with you a story about what I did yesterday I noticed one of my senators actually hasn't spoken out directly about net neutrality yet so I called his office and to my surprise I actually got through to someone it wasn't just a voicemail so all I did is I looked up his contact in Google and I got the number for the Washington DC office called it and one of his staffers picked up and I was able to talk to one of his staffers and the conversation took about a minute like you if you're at work and you could call it lunchtime it will literally go like that all I said was hello my name is Carly I'm one of the senator's constituents and I just want to let the senator know that I am in full support of net neutrality and please support net neutrality as well the staffer took a note of it and says perfect I'll send it along thank you so much for calling and that was it that it was that easy <laughs> and if you're not so much an email person there's also phone numbers down below for each of the FCC commissioners that are currently planning to repeal net neutrality and if you don't know what net neutrality is I have linked some videos down below that talk about it in a nice concise manner I highly recommend the vlogbrothers video because that'll give you the most amount of information in the shortest amount of time so you can really understand the subject Hank Green is amazing but basically net neutrality keeps the internet equal. <laughs> if you have a small business, that means that you are getting the equal amount of speed from the internet provider as a big business's website is getting. Without net neutrality, there can be fast lanes and slow lanes where the internet service providers can artificially slow down websites and demand more money from those websites to make their websites move faster and can also demand more money from consumers who are already paying for internet access to be able to access certain websites for example there could be a video streaming package where you are gonna have to now pay extra for YouTube Netflix Hulu all of that and don't forget you're already paying for internet access and now you're paying more on top of it kind of like how cable works so that's uh, the quickest of quick overviews if you want more information definitely please check out those videos below they are extremely informative and if you call your representative or senators, let me know down in the comments. Really fast, if you're the kind of person who's like, you know what, government, it's not going to do anything. My voice, is, it doesn't matter. They already have this worked out. I totally understand it. I totally see your point of view. I know I'm doing this for my peace of mind so that I know I've done everything I can. I have made all the phone calls I can to put my voice out there. So please, if nothing else, just for your own peace of mind so you know you did those things, they didn't listen, and then you can complain how they didn't listen. It is perfect. Best of both worlds. But I, I hope they listen because, you know, net neutrality is important. And the lighting on this video is crazy. All right, so let's get to today's recap before the sun totally obliterates my poor little face. There we go. Ah, the modem. At the floating rib, Julian is back. He's out on bond with an ankle monitor. J Jake, you just knocked out my, my hair tie. Oh well, well I guess I don't have a hair tie anymore. It turns out Julian had a compassionate judge who feels that there's enough grounds for a new trial and thought he could be out for the holidays and isn't making him wait for that new trial in jail. So that's pretty cool. He asked Alexis how Thanksgiving was since last year was kind of a mess, <laughs> as we all remember. How's the family, the two Jason situation, and Alexis tells him about the identical match and all of that and how Sam's decided to stay with her husband and keep her family intact. Julian wants to help but he doesn't want to push it like he does not want to push his luck because he knows he's lucky to be talking to Alexis at all and he's not expecting anything that's the main thing too he's not expecting anything. He asked Alexis what Liv's motivation could have been for this sudden change of heart because they both know Olivia's attitude wouldn't change just like that and this definitely wasn't altruistic. This was done by some kind of force or coercion and he thinks Alexis was involved. 
And Alexis is like, what? You're crazy. Why would I be involved in something like that? What, what are you talking about? And he thinks that the visit to him really got to her. And she gives Scott the credit, but Julian isn't buying it. When Alexis orders a drink, Julian gets nervous, but she doesn't buy alcohol. She gets some, she just gets water. Okay, the blue tempers the sun a lot, so we're gonna stick to this. And Julian's like, I'm glad you're good, but why are you at a bar if you're just gonna order non-alcoholic stuff? And she tells him how she's here because she dropped the turkey and everybody left her place hungry. And she's here to remind herself that she's stronger than she was a year ago and she also she just wanted to get out of the house okay Julian she wanted to get out of the house I'm sure you can understand but she won't have this casual conversation with him anymore it's too she will not normalize this and Julian still cares about her he'll leave her now and she's like well where are you gonna go he's gonna chill out until Ava calls him back <laughs> oh, oh Julian oh my god oh my goodness can you imagine okay my hair I, I don't know it's it's like this today so we're just it's been worse okay <laughs> This is what happens when it's like ultra clean. It's like it gets so poofy, but he's not hasty for a retrial He's chilled. He's good to just like chill out and he wants to try to fix things with Sam and Lucas Good luck and Leo. <laughs> good luck with that too. Julian asks to see pictures of Danny and Scott Scott Julian asks to see pictures of Danny and Scout, but then immediately backs off and now he needs like some kind of job because he sold Derek Wells Media and Julian thanks Alexis one more time before he's gonna head out. At General Hospital, Griffin is still worried about Ava. He keeps calling and texting her. He's assuming she's seeking treatment for her face, but honestly, Griffin, it's a little much, okay? It's a little much. And like, I know Ava's seeking the treatment and you know but like what if she wasn't and she just kind of passed out for the night and he's calling and texting incessantly like take it down a notch Griffin I know you're new to this but like a little much at the clinic Dr. Zajac is setting up their procedure lots of paperwork a nurse who's gonna help and the paperwork is ironclad that Ava has no recourse if anything goes wrong and she thinks it's a little too ironclad, a little much. And he says it's no different than what she signed. And the same language is practically everywhere medically. So she signs it. She just believes him on that. And she's like, oh, okay, I guess so. And then signs it. It doesn't mean it is. He could just be telling you that he is ethically questionable after all. <laughs> she feels a little off kilter, feeling that there should be more prep work. Like, we're just going to jump right into this. And he's going to give her a mild sedative. And then Ava's like, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. Thank you very much. This is too fast. And he says she just has good timing. That's why he's able to do it right now. He has a reputation of his own to uphold and he's not gonna mess with her and he shows her the testimonials and he thought she wanted to move forward with this fast. That's the reason he did this but he can schedule her for after the holidays probably around February and she's like oh February never mind let's do this now and he's hoping the treatment will fully heal by Christmas or the new year. And as he's about to get started, Griffin busts in because of course he does. He wants Ava to leave with him. Dr. Zajac says Griffin can't do this. He can't just be running in here. And Griffin wants her to leave with him. And she says that she knows what she's doing and this is her decision and she doesn't need saving. And like, I agree with Ava, which is really weird because I don't like when that happens. And he says that she doesn't know what she's doing. Like her or not, this like is Ava's choice. She can do this. If if she wants to I mean I'm just saying Griffin threatens to get the police involved and the medical association involved and Dr. Zajac wants him out but he is gonna leave the room Griffin is gonna take Ava away this is officially called off Griffin apparently found her here because he got the super to Ava's building to open her door and then he saw her research on Dr. Zajac and she thanks him for stopping her from doing something stupid but like he got the super to open her apartment so he could look around like I feel like a line was crossed here. Ava doesn't want to be needy and insecure and Griffin says that she's one of the strongest people he knows, use that to reclaim her life. He won't ever get tired of giving her reassurance, but like that only lasts so long. I mean, 
Come on. Someone's gonna get sick of someone, and I have the weirdest feeling Ava's gonna get sick of Griffin before he gets sick of her. I'm just, I'm, I'm putting it out there. I want to see if that comes true. At the park, Oscar and Jocelyn meet after sneaking out. They think Andrew Kane could be his dad. Oh, did I forget to mention that? Okay, right, so Andrew Kane is the name that Kim gave. I don't know if I said that in yesterday. So they think Andrew Kane, aka Andrew Moore, could be his dad. So they're mulling over these Jasons and how the Jasons have the same memories. And Oscar asks if Jocelyn can tell him about Andrew, aka Sam's husband. And Jocelyn's like, I can do one better. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. I know what's coming and I'm just like, oh no. At Jay Sam's place, they're happy, chilling on the couch. Poor Charles Jason suggests doing something and reliving a favorite memory, a memory from over five years ago. And she says, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. He doesn't have to prove anything. And he's like, no, I just want to commemorate something. I'm not trying to prove anything. He recounts another memory. Sam toasts to their present and future. And they're going to head upstairs. But there's a knock at the door. It's Oscar and Jocelyn. So Jocelyn introduced Oscar and they invite them in because they're kids. You're not going to just leave them out in the hallway. That would be mean. And Jocelyn says that her and Oscar are Switzerland when it comes to these two Jasons. They're not taking any sides, no matter what her parents are doing. Then she says that they're here for research on how to find a lost person. Danny had interrupted them in a, he had a nightmare, so then we like kind of come back to it. And poor Charles Jason comes back downstairs. Oscar is working on a project and how to track someone down who's lost and maybe Sam can help because she used to be a PI. Okay, I mean, Jocelyn is so turning into Carly, it's not even funny. Sam could help with some research, and poor Charles Jason asks if it's really for school. He asks for specifics, and Oscar, like, has an answer for everything, but poor Charles Jason wants them to start over with the real story, because he's not buying a second of this. Then, there's a knock at the door, and it's Kim. She's looking for Oscar. Apparently, she has a tracking app on Oscar's phone, and she wants to know what's going on. So, Sam kind of helps Oscar out, kind of recounting the whole thing. Oscar wants to know how to find a lost person for a project. Da, 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 da. At Jordan's, Jordan and Curtis are back at one of their places. Honestly, is it Jordan's place? Is it Curtis's place? It's dark. I don't know. I feel like it's his, though. Uh, he gets a notification. It's not about Andre. And she, she wants to know who this text is from. What's going on? She thinks it could be from the woman from earlier in the year. And after he kind of, like, plays her a little bit, it was Stella just texting that she was safe home. Curtis assures Jordan that he's 100% on this Andre case. He doesn't need her to remind him. He's got this. She's just stressing herself out. Then Curtis and Jordan burnt the pie while they were distracted. And Curtis gets a text. They have an address on Andre. And now end scene. Griffin takes the flash drive with the protocol. Ava doesn't see that and she doesn't know how she's ever going to thank Griffin for what he did. Julian knows Alexis helped in some way, shape, or form. She still denies it and he says, well, thank you for caring. And she tells him good luck. Jordan wants to leave now. They are going to Cuba because that's where they tracked Andre to. And both of them are going to head to Cuba. Andre's the only one who can answer the Jason questions. Mm, well, he's not, but how's anyone else supposed to know that, Franco? Kim is taking Oscar and Jocelyn back to their respective homes. And Jocelyn's like, oh, I'll just take an Uber back. And Kim's like, no, no, no. And Kim thanks Sam and Jason for their understanding. Oscar tells Kim that the guy that she just saw was the guy who could be Andrew Kane. And Jocelyn tells Kim that, you know, Carly knew she was out, so it's really not that big of a deal. And Kim's like, okay, then she won't be surprised when I tell her where you were and bring you back home. Hmm. I love Kim. <laughs> Jocelyn is sorry that she got Oscar in trouble, and he's like, yeah, it's good. Poor Charles Jason asked Sam what just happened, and then there's a special report, but I got you. I got the end of the episode, so hang on. It's literally two sentences. Uh, Sam thinks Jocelyn is up to something and dragging Oscar along, and poor Charles Jason got a weird vibe from Kim like he's met her before. <gasps> Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so that is it for yesterday's Trevor Hospital. I will see you today or tomorrow for more Trevor Hospital. I hope you have a great day. All right, bye. Call those senators and representatives of the FCC. Bye.